Hello, Watchman of Ephraim here. Been doing a lot of work around the house, so haven't been able to do much video wise. I'm trying to keep the boat afloat here. I guess for this video, I don't even have scriptures written down to go go to. Just go off the cuff. But hey, uh, Matthew 7, 13, 14, this is it, right? This got witnessed to me last week concerning the destruction of the wicked. The narrow way. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There it is, right? And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Well, that's it, right? Jesus is saying there's only going to be a few people that get saved, right? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, in this age. Let me get a sip of water here. I mean, this is nothing other than a mysterious saying. Dark saying. Uh -huh. By the Messiah. What did he say concerning uh, the kingdom of God? Hey, Matthew 13, 52. It's up here. I might as well just read it. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom, every expert of the Torah. Scribes were called in to interpret the Torah when there were disputes. They recorded the Torah. Every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Uh, what else about the kingdom? What is it? Verse 11, maybe. He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the what? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. To the disciples it was given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to those who are outside, terminology from the Torah, that's in... Mark chapter 4. Those who are outside the mysteries were not given. So the kingdom of God is in mysteries, riddles, enigmas, dark sayings. People just, they want to interpret, they want to go to the New Testament two-thirds into the movie, two-thirds into the to the book and they want to try to interpret it face up well, let's uh, look at this word destruction here it's apalia It means destruction or loss. Destruction, ruin, loss, perishing, e eternal ruin. That was added in by uh, good old Strong himself. Doesn't mean eternal ruin. Let's go on here. This isn't even ap uh, Apollumi, the classic Apollumi Greek that is in Matthew 10, verse 28. God is able to destroy, to apolumi, both body and soul in Gehenna fire. Hey, the same word can translate lost. Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Apollia, perdition, does not, listen, does not imply annihilation. More or less, it means to be cut off. Instead, loss of well-being rather than, than being. Loss of well-being. Forgive me there, I misinterpreted that. It doesn't mean cut off or rooted out. This word, uh, this word means loss of well-being rather than being, than being ruined. 
because I'll show you one or two translations. This is what this is the word that Peter uses in Second Peter when he talks about the destruction and perdition of ungodly men in chapter two. It's the same word he was using that's used here in Matthew chapter seven verse uh, twenty one. Excuse me, verse 13. It's not even the classic Apollumi. All right. What is that here? Matthew 13, 10, 11. His disciples came to him. Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. Look. The kingdom of God is in mysteries, riddles, enigmas, dark sayings that you can find where? In the Torah, as I've witnessed many times. Uh, mystery. Uh, moose... Uh, Musterion, Musterion, that's the phonetic spelling. Musterion, definition, a mystery or secret doctrine. How many look at Matthew 7.13 as a mystery, as a dark saying? No, they read it straight up. You know what, the same thing goes for... John 12, 32, if I am lifted up, I will draw all to myself. You know, it runs deeper than that. You got to go to the Torah to figure it out. How do you reconcile John 3, 16, 18? Those who believe won't perish with John 12, 32. Mysterious. Destructionists, annihilationists, universalists, they go back and forth. They toss this football back and forth, back and forth. That's why I don't debate no more. One reason on Facebook. One's throwing this scripture out. Another one's throwing that scripture out. You got to run it through the Torah or the Torah. Think not that I came to destroy the Torah and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but fulfill. That's his mission statement. <clears throat> the rest of this stuff is dark, and even the Torah is dark sayings. You know, the ceremonial law, plug in dark sayings. Plug in shadows, plug in types. Ceremonial law, that's kind of an orthodox term. Where are we at here? Mystery, secret doctrine, mystery, secret of which initiation is necessary. In the New Testament, the counsels of God, once hidden but now revealed in the gospel, or some fact thereof. The Christian revelation, generally particular truths or details of the Christian revelation, uh, mysterion, mysterion, mystery in the Bible. A mystery is not something unknowable. Rather, it is what can only be known through revelation because God reveals it. Well, it's hidden in the Torah. Mystery, secret doctrine, NAS. Mysteries. Hidden things, secret mystery, mysteries. Religious secrets. A hidden or secret thing, not obvious to the understanding. A hidden purpose or counsel, secret will. People, I mean, they do Matthew 10, 28. This one here, straight up. There are few who find it in this present evil age. Let me just click out of some of these uh, script uh, things here. Well, what do we have here? I'll just stay right here. The weed harvest. This is the few. 
in this present evil age? Why does he always talk about the wheat harvest? Especially in Matthew 13. These are the first fruits. This is the day of first fruits. That's the official name of Pentecost or Shavuot, by the way. Let's go to Numbers 28. Twenty six. Listen what God says. Also on the day of first fruits, when you bring a new grain offering. What's the grain offering? The wheat. What's it called? First fruits. Not going to understand Matthew seven thirteen unless you understand the Torah. Think not that I came to destroy the Torah and the prophets. If you don't believe Moses' writings or understand Moses' writings, how are you going to believe my words? John 5, 4, 5, 47. He's only talking about the first fruits. Where do the rest go? Under the grape harvest. Under the feet of Messiah. And what? And who? The first fruit priests. The wheat harvest. The few. Only talking about the priesthood. We need a priesthood first, right? To implement the new covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days when I take away their sins. Romans 11, I'm sorry, I forget which verse, 15, somewhere around there, I might be off. Day of Atonement, he's going to take away their sins when the Day of Atonement is applied after he takes back the earth. The whole word of God is a mystery. The kingdom of God is a mystery. These little verses, like verse 13 of Matthew 7, are a mystery. They're dark sayings, riddles, enigmas. You got to put the puzzle together. Here's, here's a better version. Uh, 13, 14, we'll go with. All right, here's New King James. They use the word destruction. Here's a better version. The new... Yeah, let me, let me just, let me do, um, let me do this. The, it's the, uh, can I find it here? New International. Right here. Here it is. New International Reader's Version. Enter God's kingdom through the narrow gate. Only the priesthood. They're going to comprise the kingdom. The rulers of the kingdom. The rest will be under their feet. The gate is large and the road is wide. That leads to what? That leads to ruin. That's the better translation for Apollia. Many people go that way. Most have never even heard the gospel. Which, hey, by the way, what is the gospel? What did Paul say the gospel was? 619, Ephesians. Let's do the New King James Version. 
Uh, pray for me that utterance may be given to me that I might open my mouth boldly to make known what? The mystery of the gospel. Mysterion. Secret doctrine. Secret. Almost nobody approaches these verses that way. He's given you little bits and pieces of a puzzle. Here a little, there a little. Again, how do you reconcile such verses like John three sixteen through 18? That only those who believe will not perish, but have everlasting life or aeonian life. And on the other hand, John 12, verse 32. If I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. How do you reconcile those verses? Universalists, quote unquote, and destructionists, annihilationists toss these things back and forth. Only those who believe are those of this age of the priesthood. Once again, excuse me, got to have a priesthood, man. First, that's the few. The rest go to the grape harvest. Where in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 28, 26, 28, Paul said, uh, then comes the end when he delivers up the kingdom and he's put all, I'm paraphrasing, all under his feet. Grape harvest. Okay. That's in the Torah too. So, how many minutes here? 17 minutes. That's pretty good. You know, we'll finish right about 18 minutes. I, I didn't even write any script. I'm just trying to keep the boat afloat here. Somebody threw this at me, and I never really covered it. It's not even the classic Greek word. Uh, apolumi. And that even can be translated lost. I mean, how do you reconcile these discrepancies? You got to know the Torah, man. Remember you the Torah of Moses, my servant, the instruction manual, where the Messiah himself learned from the Father how to gather up, how he's supposed to gather up every fragment. That's how he learned about his Messiahship and his priesthood. Our priesthood is in there. So, um, not the most organized. Just threw this up. Just trying to keep the boat afloat so I can get back on here. I got a lot of work to do around the house. So, thank you for your time and uh, thank you for listening.